Welcome back to the Crochet Cradles with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Lacy Crochet Shawl. This shawl is absolutely amazing. One of the best designs I think I've seen out of Yarnspirations. You know they just get better and better there. Today I'm going to be taking you through a very comprehensive tutorial today. It will be helpful if you understand how to read patterns. This is an intermediate level. I'm going to give you as much power as I can to propel yourself throughout this project and give you things to look for. So without further ado, let's go. I have a lot of working notes to show for you so it will be a long intro and I do apologize for those that don't need that. So let's go through the nuts and bolts of this whole thing. So what we have is that there's going to be 36 rows complete. What you see here is the starting of up to row number 12. Now what I have to share with you right off the bat, these half double crochets that you go across, yes it looks like it's the same every other row but it's not. So row number 12 is one of the only ones that don't, are not equal to that and I will show you that in more detail in just a moment. So what you have to just make sure that you do is that you do follow things along and you can kind of tell row number 12 anyway because at the top see that there's only one half double crochet and chain two one half double crochet. So they're not all equal. So you want to refer back to the pattern as much as possible. So with this here is that you will notice that it will get you started and you can see uh, two basically cascading waves. But if you look at the actual pattern you'll notice that there's a lot more. That's because it's gonna grow out. You're only seeing one third of the shawl here in diagram format. So here I turn the shawl upside down because when you're working on it and the diagram looks in this format too. So what you're looking at is 36 rows. So what I told you is that there's cascading beautiful uh, waves but as this particular project grows more waves appear. Not a lot more waves but enough to make a difference in reading it. So what I did is that I produced a little uh, diagram here and so when we get started as you know in crochet for these shawls is that they grow out not only out in the tip but they also grow up. So when you go to start this whole section is basically your starting and it will continue to go out forward. So you can kind of see these two waves are going to be your starting and you see those and you get those started right away. Then as the repeat pattern then happens another secondary waves appear right here. Then the third time you do the pattern again for the repeat then another one appears right at the end. So what you're looking at is when we do rounds 1 through 12 you're doing the first section and then you're repeating it and then you're doing another section and then another section after that. So hopefully that helps you understand on the way that this thing is growing. Once you understand that it becomes a lot easier too. Because the diagram is showing you only rounds 1 through 12, that's normal in crochet, is that I decided to go and see what 13 looks like and when I look at it from this point of view, the secondary starts a wave starts happening right here. So it's a, like a mirror image. So what happens on this side happens on the other. So I only marked up one side. These ones then continue to grow out and these are from the first uh, time we repeat and then another secondary waves then starts here. So as I told you before the waves that when you go to repeat the pattern ends up getting more and then you repeat the pattern again and you get another set. So that's kind of how it's gonna look like as we continue. So then I went a step further to determine what these counts are. So what I have is 3, 7, 2, 6 and 10. So these are the number of single crochet or sorry the number of single stitches that are by themselves before you get into the cascading or some kind of change. So what I noticed with myself is that see that you have three double trebles by themselves. You got three over here before you hit this main section over here. 7, 7 and then 2, 2. 6 and 6 and 10 and 10. So once you understand that it becomes a lot easier that you're kind of not only are you mirroring opposite to each other but you're also mirroring within the one side as well. So coming back to the pattern we have a total of three pages and we're gonna get ourselves started and we're gonna create ourselves a place marker to get our first uh, center section. You know no biggie we're gonna do that. So what I want to highlight to you is that in the even rows I highlighted this rows number two through 10 which are the even numbers. So 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 each are those half double crochets that we talked about. Now what threw me for a loop when I was doing this for the first time is that 12 is also an even number but it says 2 through 10. So 12 is an unusual instruction. It's not the same and that the difference is is that there is only two half double crochets in the first stitch where the other one up here is three. So this puts it back in balance for counting and then you gotta pay attention to that. Once you get beyond here you're going to do rows number 13 and then it picks up again the odd rows from 14 to 20. So 14, 16, 18 and 20 are is in the second row and uh, those are the same as these instructions here. 
and then you have your 15, 16, 17 and then I uh, uh, your sorry 15, 17, 19 and 21st. You come back down it says 22 is the same as the 12th which is this one and then the 23rd which is the same as the 13 it says noting repeat. So the repeat because it's now going to expand into another section of waves you're gonna have more. So it's as in the 13th back up here and then it says 24 as in the second row. So it's back up here and it says repeat 15 through 22 once more. So you go back and repeat 15 all the way back to 24. So just follow the instructions again and then finally on page number three what it would do is the next row it says repeat 23 and 24 once more and then the next row here is the final row and this gives you your total of 36 at the end. So I know that's a lot of detail but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help you get started. I'm going to take you through this. It's I think it's really important that you know how to understand and read instructions for this one but I'll do my best and we'll see what you can do for this. So do you think you're ready? Well I'm ready. So let's start. So it's Bernat Super Value Big Stripes is what it's asking for. You can use equivalent yarn and a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook in order to play. We're going to start off with our foundation row and it's simply just a simple chain and this is just half double crochets all the way back but it's gonna ask you to put a place marker in the middle one here so that we can see it in the future. So without further ado we're gonna start our foundation row and then technically row number one is going to start then after the foundation is in. So this shape will not appear on the first time we get it. It'll start pulling as we do the next rows. So let's begin. We're going to start off with a slip knot and I want you to chain a total of 41. So this is an intermediate level so I'm not gonna go through the basics of crochet. So this does not count as one. So one, two, three, four, five. Go all the way to 41 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. Okay my 41 are now complete. I want you to grab a spare piece of yarn. You're going to need that to mark a stitch as we go across. You're gonna go third chain from the hook and you're gonna half double crochet. So just count back. So one, two and go to the third and I want you to half double crochet just like that. Okay this chaining that you just skipped, skipped doesn't count as anything. In fact when you do a chain two when you're moving up the rows they never count as anything. So that is considered number one. So what I want you to do is that we're going to um, uh, do a half double crochet all the way across but on the 20th half double crochet I want you to put in a stitch marker. So this is considered one. So let's move across. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Once you get your twenty just pull up a loop and just grab that spare piece of yarn and throw it underneath that twentieth stitch. This is the very middle of your project. This will help you just stay in balance to make sure that you're confirmed to being in the center when you get there. I want you to half double crochet now the remaining of your stitches that are in the chain all the way back to where you had started. So just continue along and I'll see you at the end of this chain. I'm coming to the end and just half double crochet right into there. So we're going to turn our project just and this leave it to the side. I'm gonna go back to the diagram next and we're going to discuss what we're gonna do next. So as we begin row number one. So row number one we're going to chain five which counts as a double treble and then you are going to do a number of double trebles to, in order to get that. So there's gonna be a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. So with the chaining of five and the six that gives you seven. So these seven that you see here is pretty much the only time I think that you're going to see seven in this whole project. It's because it's just gonna get you started on the cascading look. Then we're going to then 
double treble into the next one and then we're gonna skip the next one. There is a total of nine. So nine is your magic number. Let's write that on your pattern here. So nine is your magic number that you are collecting as you go across. So you get the first one and then just jump to the next and skip. So you're skipping there. So you will have a total of nine of these things. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then you're going to put five trebles, double trebles into the next and then the middle one here, this is what's been marked with that red place marker. So there will be a double treble, chain two, double treble and then we're gonna do completely the opposite to what we just did. So you'll have your five double trebles, you will have your nine double trebles and you'll be skipping and then your final one at the end will have seven double, uh, double trebles in the end. So let's begin round, our row number one. So are you scared yet or are you gonna go? Okay, let's go. So we're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Yes, these are gonna be very tall stitches. These are awesome. This is what's gonna grow real quick, quite quick. So that was one of seven. That's considered one double treble. So to double treble, you're gonna wrap the hook three times and then going into the same stitch, pull through and then keep pulling through twos all the way back to the top. So wrapping three times, this is a double treble. Let's count. So you have your first one, one, two, three, four, five, six. You want a total of seven. Okay, so let's now move along. The next one is also going to be a double treble and it's the first one of nine. So I want you to count nine as you're going across. So to do the next one, you're gonna skip the next one here and go to the next one after it. So this is one of nine. So let's do number two. So skipping it, going to the second one over. And this is two. Do another one, skipping the next one. This is three. Skipping the next one. I'm now going to assume that you know to skip. So you got four. Five. Six, I didn't skip after I tell you to assume it. <laughs> okay. And I can see that place marker is coming up into my hands soon so I know I'm getting close to the middle. So let's count how many trebles. So don't count that group of seven here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got one more to go. So I have my nine and because you've been skipping on there it's gonna cause it to ramp up. So the very next one here is going to be five double trebles into the same one. So let's count those out. So we have one, this is two, Three, four, and five. So now you got your five in here. So this is the very middle one. So in the middle, in these ones here, um, they, they're not all equal. So the first time that you do the middle one here, there's gonna be only one double treble. Chain two and one double treble. Now you're gonna go completely the opposite down the other side so you can kinda see that it's sweeping. So the first one that you do, I'll just get you started on this side as I go down. So the first one that you start is gonna be the opposite to what you just did. So there's gonna be five double trebles into the next one. So one, two, three, four and 
five. And then you start your nine again. So then you go in right into the next one. So one and then skip the next one, go to the second over. This is two of nine. It's three. It's four. It's five. It's six. I just want to verify my count. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I can tell I can't count. So there's eight. So there's only one more left. <laughs> monkey see, monkey don't do, right? So there you go. So you got your nine. And so your very last one that you're about to do in this particular one will be seven double trebles into the last stitch. So this chaining of two that you had skipped over doesn't get counted as, as anything. Just leave it there. So there's gonna be seven double troubles into this last one. So this is three. I don't know if you trust me anymore to count. <laughs> so we have four. We have five. I think there's six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then finally your seventh is your last one. So I went all the way across for this one. I wasn't planning on that but that's okay. And let's back up the camera and you can see that sweeping action that you see in the chart has now just been formed. And now we're going to begin row number two. And rows number two through ten are always going to be the same. So let's review those. So as we begin row number two, 4, 6, 8 and 10. They're always gonna be the same. Remember I said 12 is different. So they're going to be these half double crochets and they're only gonna be on the front post as you do them. So the first time you do it you go into a regular stitch. Actually we're over here. So you chain up your two. Doesn't count as anything. There's going to be three half double crochets in the first one and then these are front post uh, half double crochets and you follow it all the way. In the middle there will be two uh, half double crochets, chain two, two half double crochets into the regular chain and then front post half double crochets in each all the way and the very final in the turning chain will have three half double crochets. Let's get you started. So let's get you started. We're going to then just turn your work. So you're going to chain two does not count as anything. It's just a builder and in the same stitch I want you to place in three half double crochets. So one, two and three. Now starting in the next post, do a, a front post half double crochet. So wrap the hook going into the front post, pull through and then pull through the, all three loops. That's a half double crochet in the front post. So you're just gonna apply one half double crochet in the front post for each except for the very middle. When you get there, remember what I just said is that there will be two halves chain two, two halves and then you carry on and you just front post half double crochet right to the end and in the last turning chain there will be three half double crochets in there. So please do that all the way across for row number two. So just made my way across. These are front post halves. I did my middle section and then in the turning chain, not a space but an actual chain is that I want to place in three half double crochets. This helps keep the pattern in balance for counting also growing out properly as well. So you're going to turn your project after this and we're going to now review row number three. So you can now see the, the beautiful ridges starting to form. So let's begin row number three. So as we begin row number three remember it's completely mirror. So we're gonna start off and we're going to now put in uh, these double trebles that you see. So these are pretty consistent now going forward so three, five, seven, nine and etc. when you're starting off. So you're gonna have chain five which counts as a double treble and then two more double trebles into the same one. So there's going to be three trebles, double trebles that are by themselves and then the next one is a group of five and then you're going to start skipping your nine as you did before and then after you do your nine the next one is gonna be one of these um, 
uh, five trebles and then there's going double trebles. I apologize if I say tre uh, trebles it, it's assumed double trebles just so you know. The next three in a row are going to be like it is over here by themselves and then this middle section is two double trebles, chain two, two double trebles and then mirror the other side as you as you go back the other way. So as long as you can understand that. So this kind of grows out into being kind of like halves but as soon as you get up to row number seven then the other side of this then begins to open up and so then that becomes like the, the beautiful um, waves that you will see in the future. So we're just getting ourselves now established and getting ready for that. So let's do row number three. So let's begin row number three. We're going to chain up five counts as a double treble and then in the same one you're going to put in two more double trebles. So that gets you started on an edge. I think that's consistent all the way through this pattern when you have these now. So now the next three in a row as I said are going to be double trebles by themselves. So let's count those out. So we have one. This is two and three. Now the next one is gonna have five double trebles in it. So let's put those five in there and count those out together. So we have one. We have another one is two. It's three. This is four. And five. So we're now going to do that sweeping action of collecting stitches as you go. So you immediately double treble into the next one to start. So you don't skip one yet. You just do the next one and then that is one of nine. So begin the next. So skipping the next one and going to the second one over. So this is number two and keep skipping as you go. This is number three. This is four. This is five. This is six. I'm just gonna double count. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven. Eight. And nine. So you have your nine that's been coming in. Now the very next one is going to be five trebles into the same one. So we have one, two, this is three, four, this is five, and that was it for that one. So there's five. So then there's three stitches remaining that you have to fill in before you get to this, the um, middle. So we're just gonna do the three by themselves. So one, two. Now the third stitch is not gonna look like it's a stitch but it is. It's just cause it's half double. So this is the third one. So the very middle section then is going to be two trebles to the two double trebles, sorry to start. One and two, chain two and two double trebles. So you're just gonna do the opposite to what you just did already in the start of this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly just talk you through it. So the next one, the next three are going to be double trebles. Then there's gonna be a five and then you just double uh, treble the next one and plus then collect your, make sure you get your nine and then you were going to have the next one after that will be your five uh, double trebles and then three double trebles in a row and then your final will have three double troubles right at the very end. So just look at that chart and you're basically mimicking what you just did on the other side here but you're just doing it to the other. So let's begin to finish this and I'll see you at the end of this row.
I'm now at the end of row number three. So I have just completed that and it's still beautiful. So let's turn our work. Now row number four is exactly what we already know. So we just chain up our two does not count as anything and then you are going to put in three half double crochets into the starting one. So one, two and three and then front post half double crochet all of the stitches and then in the very middle one here you're going to place in two half double crochet, chain two, two half double crochet and then front post half double crochet all the way to the end and in the turning chain you're going to put in three half double crochets. Please do that then for row number four. So I'm now at the end of round number four, row number four and now I'm going to continue then to round number five. So let's turn our work. So let's begin to do row number five. So let's begin row number five. So we're going to start off, we're gonna do your chain five, two double trebles in the same one. This time there's seven double trebles that are by themselves. I wrote the number seven for myself and then you're going to start the sweeping action like you already have. So just consider this whole middle section is already what you know. And so you're gonna sweep around, you'll do your nines and then you'll end up with your five double trebles at the other side and then there's going to be a total of seven in a row and then your middle section is two double trebles, chain two, two double trebles and then it's a mirror on the opposite side. Let's begin row number five. Let's begin row number five. We're going to chain up five counts as a double treble and then you're gonna double treble two more times into that same one. Now double trebles, uh, not everybody enjoys doing double trebles but the height that you can get out of a double treble is astounding. So that you'll see this uh, particular shawl growing pretty quickly. So now you're going to do the next seven in a row are just by themselves. So let's count those out as we do them. So we're gonna do one, two, this is three, four, Six, and this is seven. Okay, so you got your seven. Let's just double count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next one here is going to be following up, and we are going to place in five double trebles into the same one. So we're gonna say one, two, this is three, four, and five. Okay, so you see that this is the sweeping action is starting. Now the next nine are going to be coming together. So you're gonna start in the next one. So you're just gonna start in the next one and start counting out your nines and start skipping then after that one. So the first one's in, so one. Skip the next one, go to the next one after that. So two, three, this is four, it's five. Six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm going to double check to get make sure. So it's starting in the one after the grouping of five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I got my nine. The next one is gonna be five double trebles into the same one. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So how many double trebles are left on this side? There's gonna be a total of seven. 
So let's continue that. So let's count those up together. So one, two, three, this is four, five, six, and seven. Now you're in the middle. So there's gonna be two trebles, double trebles. So one and two. Chain two and two double trebles to finish that point. So you're just gonna work yourself opposite down the other side. I don't think I wrapped enough that time. So you're gonna work opposite down the other side and uh, just complete the rest of this row. And let's just back out the camera and see what we've got so far. Okay, so you can see the nice sweeping action is happening and that's what we're gonna do. So complete what you just learned but doing it backwards. So just going opposite direction to get yourself to the back. Once you get all the way to the other side, make sure that you do place in your three double trebles right into the very edge. So please do finish off round number five. So please finish off row number five. So I came into the end of row number five. You're gonna turn your work. So row number um, six is that even number that we talked about. So we got chain two to start, three half double crochets in the first one. So you're gonna do a front post half double crochet, one in each all the way to the point. In the point you're gonna put in a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet, and then you're gonna finish off front post half double crochet, one in each, and in the turning chain you'll put three half double crochets. Please do that for round row number six, row number six. So I'm just finishing up row number six, the last stitch here is, is three half double crochets. Turn to work and let's take a quick peek. Look at those beautiful uh, ridges. Now we're gonna go up to row number seven. So in the pattern I noticed that I was kind of marking it incorrectly here. So what I want you to do before we continue to number seven, erase these numbers that I had. I highlighted over them so I don't know if I can. So what I had is that I had two, six, ten. It's actually one, five and nine. The reason why I'm doing that is that I realized here that there's five that come together. It's very much like the nine but there's five, five, five and then I just didn't highlight it all the way through here but there's five, five and five. So you do one by itself and then the next five are like is cascading like this and you're gonna do that. So let's begin row number seven. So now that we marked the sheet right, we're gonna start off row number seven, chain five, two double trebles in the first one and then there's gonna be one by itself. Then the next five are gonna work together very much like the cascading that we have and then the next two after that will be five double trebles. So we're going to then create that look and then the nine will come together like you see and then the next two in a row will each be two double trebles and then the next five will be together to create this new sweeping action that you'll see. Now because you can't see it here, it's only for diagram reasons but you're gonna start seeing that also just starting to mellow out and creating these kind of uh, shape. And then we're gonna continue then, do one by itself and then two double trebles, chain two, two double trebles. So let's begin row number seven. So let's begin row number seven, chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and then coming into the same one, two more double trebles. So that's pretty consistent, right? So you, if anything you've got the starting of your, your uh, rows correctly. So now there's gonna be one by itself in the next one. Okay and now the next five that we're gonna do is gonna start that sweeping action. So the next one is gonna be right into the next stitch. So this is gonna be one of five and now you start skipping. So skip, go to the second one over. So this is number two. Skip and go to number and this is number three. Skip, this is number four. And skip, this is number five. Okay, do you see that? So now the next two in a row will each be five double trebles each. So let's count those out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, this is four, and five. Okay, so there is your five. The next one is also gonna have five. So this is gonna create that sweeping motion that's even more exaggerated. So one, two, three, four, and five just like so. So now the next nine are going to be coming together. So you're gonna do the sweeping motion, you're gonna collect it. So let's start off with the next one is the next stitch. So this is one of nine. So let's start counting those out. So one, skip and do number two, three, four, five, just gonna double check it and just make sure this is number six that I just did. So six, seven, eight, and nine. I am gonna double count to make sure. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Once you get your nine then the next two in a row will each be five double trebles. So let's count those. So we have one, we have two, this is three, four and five and then the next one is also five. So let's start our count again. So one, two, three, four and five. So starting in the next one we're gonna start putting five together very much like the sweeping action. So we're just going to start in the very next stitch. So you're gonna have one and then you skip, go to number two and then keep skipping. So this is three, this is four, oops I didn't skip. This is four, skip and go to five and you're left with one stitch left which is right and in the last one that's available to you is one double treble. And then you start in the peak. So the peak is the same as what you already know so it's two double trebles. So one and two chain two and two more double trebles. So I want you to complete the other side of this mirror just going in the opposite direction of what you just did and so you can see that you just created the second look. So it was like we were coming out here, we had this, now we just created this secondary one here. So complete the other side of row number seven and I will see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end of row number seven. Just turn your work. Start row number eight. You already know what to do. Chain two counts as, a, it doesn't count as anything. Three half double crochets in the first one. You're gonna do one front post half double crochet in each stitch going all the way across and then in the middle section when you get there it's going to be two halves, two chain, two halves and then you just front post half double crochet all the way to the other side and in the turning chain that you had you're going to place in three half double crochets. Please do that all the way for row number eight. 
So I just finished up to the end of row number eight and we're gonna turn to work and go for number nine. So let's go back to the diagram now and let's see. Isn't that pretty awesome? Let's begin number nine. So in row number nine we're gonna start up chain five, two double trebles in the first one and now this time there's going to be five by themselves. One, two, three, four, five and then the next five work together to do that skipping to start this kind of action and you'll see that makes sense as you get beyond what you can't see now. Then the next two in a row are each going to be these five double trebles and then the next nine are gonna sweep together. The next two are five double trebles. The next five are going to work together very much like this and then you have a total of five in a row. So one, two, three, four, five. The middle section will be the same. Two double trebles, chain two, two double trebles and then you mirror that of course the other side. So let's begin number nine. Let's begin row number nine, chain five and then just two double trebles in the beginning. Okay, so how many did we determine are by themselves? We said five. So let's do five, let's count those up together. So one, this is two, three, this is four and five. So there's your five and there. So the next five are gonna come together. So just start in the very next stitch. So this is one of five. So let's just say this is one and then skip and go to the second over. This is two and I'm gonna assume that you're skipping. So let's go to three. This is four and five. Okay, so these will work together, the five. So just like you see. So then the next two in a row are each two, are, are each five double trebles. So let's count those out. The first one, so this is one. This is two, three, four, and five. Then the next one is five also. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So now you're in the sweeping action. So the next nine are gonna come together. So let's do that. I'm, so you start in the very next one. So start in the next stitch. So that's one of nine. And let's carry on. So skipping the next one, go for number two and go all the way to nine. It's really not that hard of a pattern once you understand the flow. I think the designers did an excellent job this time. Not that they don't always, I'm just commenting. I love this pattern. When I saw it I was like what is that on the screen? I'm like that is magnificent. And I think they did an excellent job. So continuing along, so we have to get nine. So let's just uh, count. So the first one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm just gonna double count that, and make sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Get your nine in there. The next two in a row are each five double trebles. So I, let's count those up together. So we have one, two, this is three, four, and five. Just double counting and then 
do the next one. There's five in that one as well. So one, two, three, four, and five. So the next ones that we have here is that once we get that done, the next five are gonna come together. So you're gonna start in the first one. So we have the one and then skip and go to two, two, and skip and go to three, this is four, and five. Just like that. So you get your five in here. So how many in a row do you got left? You got a total of five. So let's just count those out together. So we have one. And you start immediately in the next one when you did that. So this is two, three, four, and five. The counts seem to be perfect. Pretty excited about that. So you're on the point and it's gonna be the same as what you already know. So two treble, a double trebles. So one. This is two. And then chain two. And then the next two. One. And two. So I want you to go down the other side just going reverse of what you just taught. Let me just uh, pull out more. So you can see that really starting to have that shaping. It's even picking up even more. It's awesome. And now we're gonna continue. So you just go down the other side of this just like a mirror. Just follow the path and then I'll see you at the end of this one. This is row number nine. So I've just ended on row number nine. So you're gonna turn your work. Hey, it's number 10. So that means that you know what you're doing. Again, you do your half double crochets across. You should know what you're doing. Chain two three half double crochets in the first, front post halves in each. At the point there's two halves, chain two, two halves, and then front post half double crochet in each and the turning chain will be three half double crochets. Please do that for row number 10. So I just came up to the end of row number 10. You're gonna turn your work and now we're gonna do number 11. Fabulous! Let's do number 11 next. Let's begin row number 11. We're gonna chain up five. Counts as a double treble and then two more into the same. So this time there will be nine by itself and then the nine, the next five. Let's begin row number 11. You're gonna start off chaining five, two double trebles into the first one. There's gonna be nine in a row by themselves and then the next five will then gather just like the sweeping action. The next two will be uh, five groups of double trebles and then the next nine come together, the next two groups just like you did before and then the next five come together and then nine and then at the point there two double treble, chain two, two double treble. You're getting nervous because you're running out of diagram. You shouldn't be too worried because things are going to work out. You watch and see. Let's begin row number 11. Let's begin row number 11, chain five and two double trebles in the first one. Okay, so the next nine in a row are each one double treble each. So let's do those. So let's count those up together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, This is six, seven, eight, and nine. So you have nine in a row like that. So the next grouping of five will come together. So just start in the very next one and count those out. So we have one and then skip and do two. Skip and do three, and four, and skip.
skip and do five. Okay, okay. So now that we have the five in there, you can see it's starting to sweep. The next two in a row are each one, or sorry, they're each five double trebles. So let's count the first group. So one, two, three, This is four and five. That's all in the same one. And now do the next one, same thing, five. So one, two, three, four. And five. Okay, so what's next? So the next grouping in nine, see how it's following the path? So the next grouping in nine are gonna group together. Okay, so let's do those. So we start in the very next one as always, and that's number one. Skip and do number two. And three, four. five, six, this is seven, eight, and nine. So you're at the top of the peak now. So you got your nine in there. So let's jump a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now the next two in a row are each five troubles. Do you, are you starting to see the correlation to how these are working out? So the really the big deal is getting yourself on the edge and then to the point. And then everything else in the middle kind of follows in line with each other. So the next group, the next uh, stitch has five double trebles in it. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna do the fifth one again just to make sure I did it in the right number of circulations there around the hook. And now the next one is also going to be five. Now you start sweeping. So um, the next group here, uh, the next five only are going to be grouped together. So we start with the next one. So one, skip one, go to two, and skip and go to three, four, and five. And then the next, starting in the next one after it, the next um, nine in a row are each a double treble. So we're gonna do one, two, three, This is four, five, six, seven, and eight. And finally number nine. So nine takes you to the last stitch available. And then in the top peak is the same as what you already know. So two trebles, two double trebles. So one, 
and two, chain two, and two double trebles. So one, and two. So you're just gonna complete down the opposite side. So while I have your attention here, I wanna just share with you. So right now we've been doing these groups in a five. I know firsthand once we go to row number 13, the nine starts sweeping together once again. So we're, we've been building up on these groups of fives on the edges just like you see on not only in the peak area here but also on the edge and then in the next time we're then going to start doing that sweeping action of nine again and then you're going to see it even progressively grow. So continue the other side. Let's back out the camera a little bit show you where you are and look how beautiful that is and carry on on the other side. So I'll see you at the end of row number 11. So coming up to the end of row number 11, just uh, turn your work. We're gonna go to number 12. So just chain up two and in number 12 only, it's two half double crochets in the first one and then it's front post half double crochet in each of them except for the middle one is different than the last time. So it's one half double crochet, chain two, one half double crochet. Number 12 you will be repeating in the future. This is keeping it so that the uh, stitch count stay in line. So you have to make sure that you're paying attention to when you hit row 12 that you're slightly different. You're gonna continue to front post half double crochet right to the end of the other side and in the turning chain it'll only be two half double crochets. So please do that all the way for row number 12. So I'm coming up to the end of row number 12 in the turning chain there's only two half double crochets this time. So you're worried there's no more chart left but we have to continue and get to 36 rows. So currently you have now 12 done so you've now done one third of your your shawl. You see that it's really quite pretty. So let's take a look. I'm gonna show you some tips because now you're repeating what you already know and these grooves here just continue to follow up while you start making more grooves in the future. So let's begin to look at that diagram one more time and then you're going to go through the rest of the instructions and finish off your shawl on your own. Now remember what I told you. So I took you through rounds one through 12 and then essentially what's gonna happen is that a new section is going to start forming as you begin and it's a new set of grooves that starts in this next row that we're about to do in row number 13 and it starts right here and then it starts building itself out. So then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna repeat the pattern again and then another layer is going to happen. But there's a consistency on the way that it's growing and I wanna take you to the diagram now. So here's, it is without those um, shapes in there. So in row number 13 I put some arrows and let's really zoom in on those arrows. So right where those arrows are is very similar to what you've already done. So what we have here is that these arrows represent where five double trebles go into. Notice that there's one right here. Now we've seen this before. It's in row number three. So row number three starts off exactly the same way but it's now going to be row number 13 as you begin. And so if you follow this set of instruction in number three you will get to the conclusion of this. So row number three you're gonna start off and you're gonna put your five double crochets here and then the next nine are gonna sweep. So these are all nines that are here. So nine, nine and nine and you have seen that before because in row number three there was only one set of nine but this time there's going to be three sets of nine. Do you get that? So right at the end I have another arrow here. There's five double trebles there. Where have you seen that? That's still in number three. It's in the same position. So if you look at the same stitch count it's the third one there. So one, two and three. So it's the fourth one back. See? One, two, three, four. So row number three is the same as row number 13. The only difference is that these waves are going to begin. So this time what's gonna happen is that instead of these five that you've been doing you're going to collect nine. So then this just becomes a beautiful sweeping wave and you're going to see another formation of another um, of, uh, of a, a hill starting basically here and then that's gonna start growing out. So if you look at that diagram once again or look at the photo what's gonna happen is that right here I can see it with my eyes. This is row number 13. So you can see that it was normal here. Now you're getting a bulge and then you're building that bulge out. So essentially what you just need to do is to go back and look exactly what you did. These stitch counts are the same as they grow out. So what's gonna happen is that you're going to repeat an, a set number of rows in order to continue to grow it out. So let's go back to the written instruction and let's point out where you are 
and how you're gonna proceed from here. So right now you've just finished off row number 12. I circled it because it's special because this one here the even numbers were three half double crochets in the first one and this one is only two. So it says then 13 is a set of instructions and it's just reiterating what you already know. And if you follow that pattern just like I showed you this is very similar to row number three. The even numbers that you will have from 14, 16, 18 and 20 will be written just like this. It's those half double crochets with three half double crochets in the beginning. Each one of these ones 15, 17, 19 and 21 are just the pattern growing out. So when you look at this you saw number three and you saw that there was three halves or three double trebles by themselves. The next time there will be more and then you will have then the cascading effect of the five, the five and the five and you will see that it's gonna progressively grow and then as soon as you get to the end of the repeat you start all over again. So once you get to row number 22 it's the same as number 12. So that's basically doubling what you already know here. So just come back. 23rd is the same as 13 and the only difference is that there's a repeating of four times. Last time there was not as many repeat. Okay, so that's just the indication of how it's done. And then number 24 is the same as the second row. So just look back to the second. And then rows number 15 through 22 once more. So just read then from 15 to all the way to 22 it says just like you see. So follow the instructions and you end up back on that 12th row which is the special row. You then go into the last page of your set of instructions and in the last page if I could just find my page here it says it repeat rows number 23 and 24 one more time. Okay. The repeating is saying it's gonna be five times so you're gonna see that you'll see the cascading going on more. And then final row is this set of instruction here and essentially it's just the final at the end and this will have a total of 36 rows. This is not a hard pattern to understand as long as you see, see the correlation of the instructions of how things are growing right in the, uh, the beginning of the instructions and right up here because everything else in the middle kind of stays consistent, right? So if I bring back my sample this beautiful cascading that you see will continue up just the same way. This one will also continue. You're going to be making a new one here that's gonna start to bubble and then you will have a third one and then you'll see a new one as you start on this side. So as you begin the next set of instructions you will see one, two, three, four bulges happening and then you'll just be carrying those up and continuing. Hopefully this makes any sense. This is an intermediate level um, project. I keep saying that. The reason for it is that because of this pattern is with the waves and stuff it, it's essential that you understand how this pattern is working with the set of instructions that have been provided to you. Um, I think it's one of the most beautiful shells I've seen and now let's turn her upside down just like you see. So that's what your goal is today to make this and when you get to wear it you can look like that. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Good luck. I would love to see your creativity online and hopefully I provided enough information for you, for you to be able to follow and I apologize that this tutorial has been so long. Until next time have a good one. Bye bye.